Proverbs chapter 27, verse 15. A continual dropping in a very rainy day. Drip, 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 drip. And a contentious woman are alike. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. And the ointment of his right hand, which be raised itself. Again, it doesn't say wife. I wonder how many times out of pulpits, oh, you know, the, the, it doesn't say, it says a woman. It could be a wife, it could be a daughter, it could be an aunt, it could be a, a, a female servant. It could be a visitor. But we are talking about a man who married a thousand wives. I think he knows what he's talking about. And what he's saying, a woman that is contentious, argumentative, mouthy, is like that. The, the drips of a rain. It's annoying. And you can hide her. You can hide that woman as much as you can hide the wind. Impossible. She is going to reveal herself some way, somehow, that there she is. You can keep her home, but within time. And as the ointment in thy right hand, you know, you go, you go put your right hand out. Oh, what's that in your hand? Oh, I, I got the ointment on it. I mean, look at my hand right now. You know, I got medicine for a rash on my hand. You can't hide it. Iron sharpens iron. You need iron to, 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 to make iron sharp. Iron axe. So a man sharpens his countenance, his, his, his vision, his, his looks of his friend. So iron sharpens iron. So if you get a wise man, he's going to sharpen, he's going to help himself to be wiser. If you got a fool, well, he's going to be more foolish. Because iron produces a, a, a sharpened iron. A, a wise man produces a sharper wisdom. And a fool brings about foolishness. It's who do you hang around with? Who are your friends? Are they going to help you? Or are they going to forbid you? Whoso, now verse 18 is a verse that's probably just thrown out of modern Bible. Whosoever keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. Plain and simple. Well, what's the problem with that verse? So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Oh, you can't have slavery. You can't. You can't have servitude. And then you're going to get no gold, silver, precious stones. You're not going to get no crowns. You're not going to get inheritance because Jesus Christ is Lord. In order to be Lord, you have to serve him. He is master. Jesus Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah, the master. And if you're going to get rid of master-servitude relations because they have defiled your thinking, then you're going to lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And you won't get any. You're either going to serve Jesus Christ or you're going to serve the devil. Or you're going to serve your own stupidity. As in water face, as in water face, answer it to faith. And you get that brush of water in your face. It's cool, it's refreshing. So is the heart of man to man. And this fits right along with the iron sharpens the iron. It's refreshing to have that water just, just washed into your face. And so is the inside of the man the heart. If he's a right, proper man. 
and he will help you through your life. Refreshing. Unless he's a fool. Hell and destruction are never full. I mean, you figure, I mean, we know Abel went to glory, went to Abraham's, well, Abraham's bosom was before Abraham. But the first lost man that died, And since that first lost man died and went into hell, how many people died today and are in hell? Now Solomon is looking to it as the present tense now, and it's true. But there is coming a day that hell will be full. There will be that time when the last man to enter hell will enter hell and hell will be full. But that's not the end, Revelation 20. It gets worse. Here we say, go to hell, go to hell. That's not it. You know, a man gets out of hell. We say you won't ever get out of hell. But Revelation 20, verse 11, I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. All the heavens and earth are going bye-bye. With all your toys and all your, your goods and all your money and all your fame and all your your Mickey Ratland and all your, your amusement parks and everything you laid in the dirt is going away. Bye-bye. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. They're standing in nothing. Because everything's fled. They're out there in outer space in darkness with the light of God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Notice it doesn't say the land's book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. God's got books on you. According to their works. There's your works. God is a bookkeeper. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them. Or it. And that's the sea that's above your head. That's not the Atlantic Ocean. That's not the Pacific. That's not the Mediterranean. That ain't the Jordan. That ain't the Great Lakes. That's the sea above your head. Where astronauts go in space ships. Where they have to wear an oxygen suit. You don't believe that? That's fine. You you be the false one. The sea gave up dead were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged according every man according to their word. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That place of hell that Jesus went into where the rich man is going to vomit out all the occupants. And all those occupants that are in hell are going to stand before God, the great white throne of judgment. And death and hell was cast in the lake of fire. Death and hell, the realm, goes into a place called the lake of fire. And whoso was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Where death and hell is. So hell goes into the lake of fire. And all those that were in hell go into the lake of fire where hell is. And the devil. And the false prophet. And the antichrist. 
One day, hell will get full with the last soul. And then hell is going to vomit every soul it has in it. And they're going to stand before God on nothing. Because heaven and earth has fled away. And they'll be judged. And if their name are not written in that book, they go into the lake of fire where death and hell is. If their name is in the book, they don't go into the lake of fire. Notice it, it said death. Well, go back, go back there, Revelation 20. I, I had someone tell me, you know, this is not correct, and you're not correct. You're listening to what you got things to believe in. I got things that the, the Bible says. Look at verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. All right. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which was in them. And death and hell delivered the dead in them. So, verse 12, there are dead people. Verse 13, there is the sea that has the dead above your head. And then there is hell. There are dead people in verse 12 that are not in hell, verse 13. And the books are open. And if your name's in that book of life, not the Lamb's book of life, if your name is in that Lamb's, in the Lamb's, I keep on saying, in the book of life, you go off into glory. Jews go into the new earth. Gentiles go to the new heaven. There are no Christians there. And if your name is not in that book of life, you go into the lake of fire. And already in the lake of fire, there's hell. So you do get out of hell. And I can't say a brief time because eternity has stopped at the, before the great white throne. And you stand before God in judgment between the lake. I'm talking about a man that's in hell. You stand before God between hell and the lake of fire. There are saved people at the judge at the great white throne judgment, and I, there are things that people believe I don't believe in the Bible, and there's things I believe you don't believe, but that's what the scriptures say. So hell and destruction. So destruction goes hand in hell, hand in hand with hell. Are never full. So the eyes of men are never satisfied. Man always wants more. I mean, I got two prayer requests right now. I want I'd like God to answer. And I am not going to be foolish enough to say, God, if you answer my prayer, I'll never pray. That's foolish. Because again, I mean everybody knows I'm praying for a wife. If I say, God, if you give me a wife, I'll never ask. No, if you give me a wife, Lord, I'm going to be praying for that wife. And if she gets sick, I'm going to be praying, Lord, heal her. Anything, and I'm going to be praying. There's nothing ever to say, I had enough. You can't say that, you know, once I reached, and I'm not talking politics, but once I reached the office of the President of the United States, I don't want anything else. Why do you want four more years? It's not enough. Man wants a job, and he wants to go up the ladder, and he wants more money. It's coveting. It's a difference between a desire and a need and a want. A need is something we absolutely, absolutely have a need. We have a need for air, oxygen, food, and water. A car is not really a need. There are buses, there are two feet. Making money and a job. That's not essential. 
Because there are people in the world that are, don't have a job and they're getting, and I'm not talking, well, I'm talking about, they're getting by without a job. And it's a want, I need a job. But when you look at hell and destruction, they are never full, so are the eyes of human men. We saw a man involved in alcohol. Oh, and you know, I get wounds without causes, and I, strange women and all that. I'll never do it again. And then the next possible moment, he's getting drunk again. You start off with a little drug as marijuana, and then you end up yeah, crack. Because you're never satisfied. Pornography starts off with a little book, little magazine, little pictures, and then you look at the crime rate of some of these people who are in jail, incarcerated, and you say it started with just a little look. Never enough. As the fining pot for silver, and what you do is you get a pot and you heat silver up, and a furnace for gold, you put gold into a furnace. And what you're doing is you're purifying, you're trying to make it more pure by removing the, the scum, removing the, the, the dirt and the impartials of it. So is a man to his praise. If you're going to praise yourself, and you ought not, we read the other night, let other men praise thee. You better be assured that your praise is pure and has been through a fire furnace and has been through a fining pot and has been purified and you're not going to add any scum. Because you know what men like to do? They like to tell a story and I do it and it's a sin. And they add more details. They make it more drama. And make it more effective in our life. Now we ought to be getting rid of that scum. We better get rid of those lies. We better get rid of the deceit. And just have, if I'm going to tell something about me to somebody else, it better pass through fire. It better pass through pureness. Better to come short of your story. And then to add lies and and. and fairy tales to your story. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in mortar among wheat with a pestle, and you've seen the, the symbols of the pharmacies, it's that little stone bowl and that little that little hand thing, and it just grinds the medication and, and mixes the medication, makes the medication in powder. And, and it's grinding and mixing. And if you were to put a fool, if you were to beat a fool as you would with the wheat, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. It is sorry to say that many times majority of a fool will remain as a fool even if you chastise him. Though you spend thousands and millions and maybe billions of dollars on fools in the education system. They are going to be, the majority is going to drop out and just become fools. Or they'll get a diploma where they can't even read the name on the diploma. That's foolishness. And there'll be times as you're in a public ministry whatever, however you do your public ministry, and you're dealing with a guy, and your ambition is you want this guy to get saved. He's a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. You're not getting anywhere with him. Unless God miraculously through the Holy Spirit reaches down into his heart. It's sad, but not everybody goes to heaven. It's sad that the fact is that that fool may die in his foolishness and end up in hell. You know, there's one class of people in hell that we talked about. 
And I don't care if you're rich. I don't care if you're great. I don't care if you're if you're living underneath a bridge. I don't care if you're living out by a dumpster. I don't care if you got all the money in the world. I don't care if you got all the fame in the world. Your names in the newspapers. Your your pictures on a girl's uh, uh, bedroom wall. Your, your pictures on a on a boy's back of his wall or in the locker. Whatever fame or whatever you are, fools go into hell. Because fools have said in their heart that there is no God and Jesus Christ is God. I dealt with a Jehovah Witness today. She come up to me and I told I said, after I realized who she was, I said, God is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is God. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, I know who you are now. You're a fool. And I did my usual thing. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. That woman told me, well, maybe Thomas was wrong. I said, then how come Jesus Christ did not rebuke him? I said, ma'am, I said, you came walking up to me and you said, God, what are you doing here? I'm going to say, whoa, 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 hold on, lady. Hold on. I'm not God. I'm a preacher, but I'm not God. I said, ma'am, I said, if I, if I came up and dressed, I said, goddess. What are you doing? Would you allow me to call you? A, she's no. And yet Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and there was no rebuke. And that woman still left the conversation. Jesus is not God. The fool has said in his heart. Well, I thought that was atheism. No, a fool in his heart that says there's no God. When you reject Jesus Christ, you're an atheist. Because Allah is not God. The Pope is not God. Mary is not God. Joseph Smith is not God. Jesus Christ is God. And if you deny Jesus Christ as God, you're a fool and you'll go into hell with the other fool. Every man in hell, whoever, whatever he was, would be a king, a queen, a president, a senator, an ambassador, a bum, a auto mechanic, uh, somebody who's gone on the moon, somebody who fights in a war, somebody who is in a pet shop, somebody who, who cooks your meal, somebody who, who delivers your food, whoever they are, if they are in hell, they are all fools. Because they said, Jesus Christ is not God. And I can preach all day long. I can go hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, which I would love to do. And there are some people there, some of the vendors there. It's sorry to say many are going to remain foolish in their life. And as I had another couple come up and they, they, they asked me properly, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm doing, how I do it, why I said, because. We meet new people, and I said, look out, I said, look out here, there's a lot of people here. And there were. I said, my loud voice reaches out to them all, and I'll never see them again. And yet God has given me a loud voice to reach out to all the people who are here, and they hear about Jesus. Some of them may get saved. Those that don't get saved, they're fools. And it says, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. He dies and goes to hell with his foolishness. That rich man said, I'm going to tear everything down. And I'm going to build me a storage center. And I'm going to have everything like that. I'm going to say, so relax and take ease. And God says, thou fool. And that guy died that night, thou fool. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. That's somebody who's got animals. Livestock, pets. Look to your pets. Don't undertake care of your, your animals. Can I take that verse one step more? Can I take it above an animal owner? Let me show you something. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. What did Jesus tell Peter? Feed my 
sheep. You know what's a pastor and pastors, a pastor and a preacher's job to do is to look diligent to know the state of his flock and well to his herds that are in his church. It is the pastor's responsibility. He is the under shepherd of the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, to look to his to his flock, look to his animals, and then one sheep, when it left the ninety eight nine, that shepherd went out into the field and found that lost sheep. And I know many through all the churches I've been in, I know many that have gone out of the flock and the pet where did they go? Well, I don't know where he went. Even my own self and my wife one time, we left the church. Uh, this, this misunderstanding. That guy never came never came to us, and we returned back to that church years later. Oh, I thought you fell off the, the earth. That's not your job, buddy. You insulted us. You demerited us. It ought to have been you to come to us and say, what was the problem? It is up to you as the pastor and your deacons of your church, if you read the deacons in the book of Acts, to go out and take care of the widows of the church and take care of the people in the church. But we are too busy. Bring the bring the goats in. Bring the goats in. Bring them in Sunday morning. And I got plenty of goat food for the goats that come in Sunday morning. But I ain't going to feed the sheep with sheep food. And meanwhile, the sheep and the flocks and the herds that sit under your pastorate are starving to death. They're not getting fed. They're not getting the full potential. They won't get full reward at the judgment seat of Christ because you're not diligently you know the flocks and the herds that sit under the congregation that God's given you. And God told Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. He never said feed the goats. And as far as the goats, Jesus said go into the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say bring the world into the church. Now you check that out in the Bible and you study the Bible and you're wrong if you're going against what the scriptures say. It is the pastor, it is the, the, the preacher's responsibility of those that sit under him. God gave you those sheep. You're to take care of them. And throughout the Old Testament, in the Minor Prophet, God scolded the shepherds for not feeding his people Israel. They were maimed. They were sick. They were broken. They were getting fed to the, to the lions. They were getting fed to the wolves. And the, sh the shepherds were, were taking the sheep and they were killing them and eating the sheep themselves, living off the sheep. That's not diligent taking care of the flocks and the herd. Those preachers and those pastors are going to stand before God one day, either the judgment seat of Christ if they're saved, or woe be if they stand in a great white throne of judgment if they're unsaved, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And they're going to have to give an account for every sheep and every lamb that sat under them in their church. For riches are not forever. We read in Revelation, heaven and earth is going to pass away. So is the gold, so is the silver, so is the dollars, so is the peso, so is the pound, so is all forms of money, so is the, the stock market, so is the stocks, so are cars, the petroleum, the gasoline, everything is going far, far away. Burn up, Peter said, in a fervent heat. And does, and does the crown endure for every generation? One day, Queen Elizabeth, through death, if the Lord tarries, her crown is going to be given to one of her children. 
The crown was given to her when her husband died. One of these days we're going to pass the Oval Office unto another man or woman. The Emperor of Japan. One day there'll be somebody else. We worry about Kim, whatever his name is, in, in North Korea. One day Mr. Kim is going to have the wages of sin is death. And there'll be another Korean leader. A Russian czar. A prime minister. But there's coming a day, one king of kings, one of lord of lords. And when he is crowned and he comes back and takes David's throne. The Bible says that Gabriel said to Mary forever. He will sit upon the throne of David. Over his, over God's people, the children of Israel. And the crowns of Jesus Christ will never go away. Who knows what's going to happen Tuesday? Who knows we're, who we're going to inaugurate in January for a president of the United States? And in four years, we'll get another one. Or, you know, sad to say, if, if the president president and whoever gets you know if he dies in office or whatever we're, we're going to put somebody else in but there's one crown that lasts forever and that's the crown of jesus christ the hay a period and the tender grass shows itself and the herbs of the mountains are gathered together that's that's weird we're looking at look diligent to your flocks the crown doesn't endure all generations. Then we're looking at the food of the crops. We go from take care of the animals to a position of authority. And then we get to feeding the animal. Listen, as a pastor, preacher of the church, your position ain't going to last forever. You may be called pastor or preacher here on this earth, but you won't be called pastor and preacher in heaven. Matter of fact, you get a brand new name. And I've had people tell, well, that's not true. Well, okay, fine. And you just, you mislead yourself in the Bible. And when we get a new name, we don't get a title of doctor and, and DD and pastor. And we don't get those. There's one shepherd, chief shepherd of the flock, and that's Jesus Christ. So we go on to taking care of the flocks, taking care of the herd, and that, and that crown ain't forever. And the hay appears, we go to the food and the herbs. The lambs are for thy clothing. Wool. You get the wool off the sheep. A pastor is to be clothed by the clothing of the people that God's given them. And a pastor of a church, the preacher of the church, ought to be, listen, listen, double hired as an ox. He's supposed to be ta taken care of by his church. He's not supposed to be getting a secular job. His job is the studying of the word of God and the deacons of the church are to take care of the tables, servitude of the church. That's Bible. And you don't like it, you don't like the Bible. And it is the sheep, not the goats, that are provide the clothing. And the goats are the price of the field. Well, the field is the type of the world. Didn't you get read the parable of Jesus? He said, and the field is the type of the world. Those goats are the type of the world. They're not the sheep. Because when it comes to the second advent, Jesus will divide the sheep nations from the goat nations. The sheep nations that helped Israel go into the millennium, the goats go into hell.
The goats are unsaved and the field is the world. Thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food. Enough for thy food. Not in excess. For the food of thy household and for the maintenance of thy maiden. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 9. I don't like what you said. Well, I don't care what you don't like. It's Bible. Black and white. First Corinthians 9. Trying to turn my page. Verse 7. Who goes to war for any time of his own charges? What soldier pays for his own way? They don't. He's paid by the government. Who planted a vineyard and he needs not the fruit thereof? Didn't we just read that in Proverbs about the fig tree? Who feedeth the flock oh, and eateth not the milk of the flock? You feed your sheep. You feed your lambs. And you let them take care of you what it's supposed to be. Verse number 14. Even, even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. You're supposed to live on what you preach. And your members and the members of the body of Christ is supposed to be taking care of you. Look at verse 9. For it's written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox. You know what that ox is? That ox is the preacher. When that ox is hooked up to a yoke and he treads out the corn. That ox is allowed while he is serving and taking care of that threshing floor. He's allowed to put his head down and gather food to eat. You are not to put a muzzle on that ox while he's working. And yet there are churches that put muzzles on their preachers. Just telling you what's true. It says, thou shalt not muzzle the, the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Does God take care of his oxen? If God takes care of his oxen and the sheep of God don't take care of the preacher, there is trouble somewhere. Somebody is not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if the sheep are now are malnourished, are not being fed like they're supposed to be being fed, there is trouble somewhere and somebody's in trouble. It's plain and simple. But we're the lad of the scene church age. We're rich, we're splendor, we're great, we're wonderful. And God says, Bleh. oh man. And God says about the lad of the scene church age, Jesus Christ is knocking on the door on the outside of the church. You know, they say, as the days of Noah, as the days of Noah. You know, it was in the days of Noah in that ark. God was inside the ark and he told Noah and his family, come, come in the ark. God was in that ark. In the lad to see church age, God is outside the door. In Noah's time, the door was open for Noah to come in and be with God. And God and God shut that door. In the lad to see in church age, Jesus Christ is standing outside the closed door of the church. It was open door for the Philadelphian church age, and it said, No man can shut, but the door is shut in the lad to see in church age. Check it out. But we'll go, okay, you don't believe me, let's go to Revelation. Revelation 3. 
We got to check with scriptures because guess what? There are lazy Christians who won't check the scriptures out. So we'll do it for you. Revelation 3. And we'll get the title of the church. Verse 7, Philadelphia. All right. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. You know how many open door Baptist churches there are? Wait. No man can shut it. Philadelphia Church Age, there's an open door and no man can shut it. Look at verse 20. Well, look at verse, uh, where is it? Verse 14. Church of the Laodiceans. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, the door of the church has been closed. I said, Don't you dare tell me we're in the Philadelphian church. We're in the age of God. No, God's not approved. We make God sick. The church is not taking care of their pastors and preachers, and the preachers and pastors are not taking care of the flock. And we got big, big buildings. And we got uh, preachers and teachers that got yachts and airplanes and all other nonsense. And the sheep are underfed and there are more goats in the assembly than there are sheep. Friend, that's the trouble. That's the problem. 